Hey guys, today we're talking about the 20 valve silver top harness. If you follow the loom from the fuse box, the first of the two connectors are for the reverse lights and the thermofan switch. The reverse lights connect on top of the gearbox and the thermofan switch connects to the side of the thermostat housing. The next three connectors are the temperature sender, that's the grey two pin plug, the distributor connector, which is a larger black connector, and the earth eyelet. These all connect near the thermostat housing. The most important out of all the connectors in the loom is the earth eyelet. This needs to be secured to the side of the thermostat housing with a bolt as it provides all the earths to the ECU and the sensors. Where the wires are dissect, the grey three pin plug is for the electronic speedo. This can be ignored if you're on a cable. The single pin connector is for the temperature sender for the dash. The temperature sender for the dash connects to the side of the thermostat housing. The plug hiding under the loom is the idle sense control valve. This allows the ECU to control a consistent idle speed by letting more or less air as required enter the engine. A stepper motor is used on the 20 valve and some of the older aftermarket ECUs cannot control it. The 7 pin black plug is used for the airflow meter. The airflow meter controls the fuel pump on the silver top. It also sends a signal to the ECU which measures the temperature of the air entering. The ECU uses this data to adjust fuel trims. Many people dislike the airflow meter based on the restrictive nature of a flap being required to open when the air is allowed in. I think the main reason is that once you have an airflow meter in place you cannot run open trumpets and listen to that amazing sound. The black diagnosis box is used for troubleshooting. You can manually power the fuel pump, check the ECU for error codes, obtain an RPM signal and many more things from within inside this box. The 2 pin black connector is the connection for the coil. The black wire with the white stripe is for the power. The 5 pin black connector is for the igniter. The RPM signal for the dash is picked up from this plug via the black wire. The 4 pin oval connector contains a pressure switch for the air conditioning plus the other end of the thermofan control switch, which in turn goes back to the fuse box. The other two pin connector is for the radio suppressor. This little box stops that annoying whistle through the radio that matches the engine revs. The square four pin grey connector connects to the starter relay. Only the silver top 20 valve has this relay on the igniter bracket. The black top has it within the fuse box itself. The rectangular black and grey plugs have all the connections inside the cabin. The dash signals like the oil pressure, the water temperature, RPM signal etc are within those connectors and other things like the air conditioning controls and other electrical load sensor items are contained within them. If you trace the continuity from the two ECU plugs, you'll notice that some of the wires run to the cabin plugs directly and nowhere else. These are used to provide the electrical load inputs and other things like the starter signal to the ECU. The single black plug is for the starter solenoid trigger wire and the thicker round cable is for the starter main power. The two pin black wire is to signal the charcoal canister to the purge. The knock sensor is a single wire connector. It is not uncommon for an ox sensor to fail on the 20 valves once you get up to around 200,000 Ks. The 3 pin oval connector is for the alternator. The metal eyelet is used to charge the battery and also connects to the alternator. The 2 pin grey connector in the AA101 is used to get power to the BCM. This allows the immobiliser to work and central locking. The cabin power connector is how the injectors, coil and igniter are powered. This power is sourced from the black with the white striped wires. The thicker two white wires provide constant power to the cabin and have continuity between the battery and the alternator. The connectivity of this plug is located near the driver's strut tower. The 4-pin connector is the O2 sensor connection. 
This is a heated sensor as it is located near the catalytic converter. The heater circuit is controlled by the ECU by providing an earth to the sensor. The black connector is for the throttle position sensor. This sensor tells the ECU how wide the throttle is open. That in turn will adjust the fuel mappings to deliver more or less fuel as required. Here are the injectors. You'll notice that there's a box around each of the connectors. This box ensures that each injector is connected to the intended cylinder. This is because the 20 valves run sequential injection and the engine would run poorly if the wrong cylinder was being delivered fuel. Sequential fuel injection traditionally delivers better fuel economy and throttle response. The 2-pin grey connector is for the VVT solenoid. This allows additional oil into the cam gear to advance the timing of the cam. It is found that the variable cam timing increases torque across the mid-range RPM. VVT is switched off during the higher rev range. The single wire connector is used for the oil pressure light in the dash. The remaining connector is for those that are lucky enough to have air conditioning and it connects to the compressor. Here is the 20 valve silver top wiring diagram. If you're finding it hard to read, don't worry. The diagram is readily available on the internet from our sponsor SQ Engineering's website. We will post the link below in the description of this video. If you haven't heard of SQ Engineering, they sell genuine Toyota parts and often have the 20 valve items in stock. And they also make custom aftermarket parts for the 20 valve and 3SGE motors. Finally, it's worth noting that the ECU pinouts between the automatic and manual ECU are different. That means you can't get an automatic ECU and plug it in to replace your faulty manual ECU. I won't cover all of the pinouts in this video, but if you pause the video, you can reference them as required. One handy thing I also learnt was if you remove the lid of the ECU, Quite often, the pinouts for the ACU are printed on the circuit board. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video, so please like and subscribe to the channel.